Hi, let's suppose two roads coming from two different directions continue straight and intersect at a point. Thus, a four-way road intersection is formed. Just all roads are connected in the middle and road vehicles are good to go. Another approach is to build a flyover road bridge on top of another road at the intersection point. It significantly reduces traffic jam. Similarly, if a train heading from east to west and another train is running from north to south over the same region, a rail track intersection or track rail junction likely to form at some point. In this case, simply joining both track rails together doesn't work like asphalt road. It takes a larger area to build low slope long railway bridge because a train can't climb steep slope due to low traction between wheels and rails where these are metal components. On the other hand, road vehicle's rubber tire gets good traction on asphalt road. Also, vehicle dynamics plays a great role for both cases. However, train wheels run on rail track in a specific way. Wheel thread area sits on track rail and plane section stays inside following the track rail's inside wall. In this arrangement, flange can't pass through track rail. So a little gap between opposite track rails are added. Now wheel flange can pass through this gap easily. Also guard rails or check rails are installed like this to guide wheels through the junction area. This rail track level junction known as square crossing because rail track junction forms a square shape. In most cases, square crossings are avoided on main lines because high number of trains are running on main lines daily resulting more vibration on track rails thus more wear and tear and thermal expansion. This gap likely to change and might cause critical problems. Instead a different approach is adopted to reduce this issue. An angle between two track rails is kept lower or higher than 90 degree. That means it creates one pair of acute angles and another pair of obtuse angles. Or it can be like this where B frogs and K frogs are jointed with the stock rails. Or in some design, one track is slightly lifted throughout the crossing area. Light signals are used to alert train driver to stop or wait while another train passing on second track through the junction or to permit the train to approach towards the junction. Speed limit signboards are placed beside the rail track to notify train driver about maintaining proper low speed limit while approaching the crossing. Wheels approach towards crossing while guided by the guardrails and continues on the rail track. Here, guardrail prevents wheels sway motion and guide wheels through these gaps. Thus, train wheels able to pass through the diamond crossing easily. From top view, this type of level junction looks like a simple diamond shape. That's why it's called diamond crossing. 